Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I want to talk to you about simplicity. Now, when I mean simplicity, I'm talking about creating art journal pages that are not necessarily quick, but are quite simple in their construction without having to do lots and lots of different layering. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is that recently um, I've been looking at comments on my YouTube channel and I've been getting a few comments that are at both ends of the spectrum. On one end of the spectrum you have comments that say that people think I over layer and on the other side of the spectrum I get people saying that my pages are simplistic. Now for me it depends on what mood I'm in as to how many layers I want to put down on an art journal page. And there is no right and there is no wrong as to how many layers you want to put on your pages because it's down to personal preference and the mood that you're in on the day that you sit down to create something. So it depends on the mood you're in and what you're inspired to create. That really dictates the content of your art journal page. Now for me, some of the nicest art journal pages I've ever seen have been very, very simple. But I have seen some art journal pages that are so complex and the compositions are quite overwhelming that they are quite beautiful in their own right. And there's nothing wrong with either of those. You can have an art journal page that has one or two layers and you can have an art journal page that has a thousand layers. They're both equally valid. But today, I want to show you an art journal page at the simplistic end of that spectrum. One that you can do using maybe only one or two layers and only one or two different colours. So I'm working on a piece of £200 or 400 GSM watercolour cardstock and I have this beautiful bird napkin that was sent to me in Happy Mail by Alien Hero from Germany and I've already removed the two extra backing plies and just with a pair of scissors, I'm going to just cut off just that one section that I'm going to use in my art journal page. Now that I've removed off the excess, I want to try and get rid of the word beautiful. So I'm going to remove that from the background because I don't want any other text apart from my one single word that I'm going to use for my title for the page. And where the tissue paper has straight lines, I want to make that a little bit more organic. So I'm just going to smooth out and round off any edges of the tissue paper, making sure I don't have any straight lines at all. And once I'm happy with the way it's cut out, I'm going to glue it down onto my watercolour cardstock using the matte medium from Mod Podge. So all I'm going to do is just to add some of the matte medium to the back and then go over very, very gently with the brush, very, very gentle strokes to make sure that I don't tear the tissue paper at all. So I'm just going to add a little bit to the paper first of all and then lay it down just so that I know it's caught and that it is, isn't going to move on the page at all. And then I'm going to turn the page around and then work from the other side, adding the glue and then just smoothing the tissue paper down onto the paper from the inside out. You'll see me using brush strokes from the inside of the tissue to the outside of the tissue, making sure that there's no bubbles, no wrinkles in it.
Now once I'm happy that it's all glued down, it's all nicely sealed, there are no bubbles, no wrinkles, I'm going to just grab my heat gun and give it a little bit of a warm through just to dry it off. It doesn't take very long because obviously it's tissue paper. So I'm just going to give it a gentle dry and then I'm ready to add on my first layer or second layer. So utilising the Jet Black Archiver link, we have black in the tissue paper design and I have a very old script stamp that I picked up on a holiday to the US a few years ago from Michaels, so this is Recollections brand and I'm just checking to make sure that I know which way up the stamp is because it's obviously backwards and it's a very very tight script I wasn't really sure exactly whether it was upside down or not so I just did a little bit of a test on my craft mat before I decided which way was the right way up. So now I know which way is up I'm just going to lightly add some of the Jet Black Archival link onto the stamp and then just add a few impressions around the page. I'm only going to do two or three. I'm not going to do many at all. So I'm going to do one at the bottom, one at the top, and I'm going to do a couple just over onto the right hand side to bring that design into the main design that I've already put down with the bird. And that's it. Restraint. I'm showing as much restraint as I possibly can here. The trick with simplicity is not to get carried away and just try and hold off the urge and the temptation to add that stamp all over. Okay, so the next one I'm going to use this Tim Holtz Flourish layering stencil and I'm going to grab my Cobalt Archival Ink and I'm going to add a little bit of that Cobalt Blue Ink through the stencil but this time I'm going to bring in the pattern. I'm going to try and get a curve on that flourish so it comes from the bottom of the page up and underneath where the bird is sitting. Now this will create a guiding line for the eye to bring your attention or to guide you into the page. And as you can see I'm just lightly applying the ink through the stencil. I'm not going very heavy because I don't want the colour to be too dark. So I'm just doing it very very gently and very very lightly. Now I'm going to turn the stencil around and I'm going to repeat the process. This time I'm going to bring it in from the top right hand corner and then bring it down towards the head of the bird. Now again that guides the eye from the top of the corner of the page into the focal point following a curved kind of guiding line throughout the entire page. So it goes from the top right hand corner down into the bird and then from the bird underneath the bird and then back out again across to that bottom left hand corner. So almost an S shape if you follow the pattern including the bird. And then just to balance it, creating that kind of visual triangle, I'm just going to add a very small amount just on the far left hand side of the page also. So my next step is to bring out that grey that's already in the bird and the butterflies and the flowers or the, the leaves on the page. So I'm still using the same colours that I have in my focal point and this is the watering can archival ink so this is a grey colour and I grabbed a finger dauber that I had in my stash I was going to just use this finger dauber through another stencil uh, and as I tested it the end fell off. There you go look. So I abandon the finger dauber and go back to the ink blending tools that I have already been using and I just swap out for 
one that I had lying on my desk, which seemed almost new. So I'm just adding that to my blending tool now. And then as you can see, there we go. And then I'm just going to load up with the ink so that I can carry on. Now in my stash of stencils, I have a stencil called Love Post. This is it, the mini Love Post stencil from the Crafters Workshop, which also has kind of the postmark circles that's, that's also incorporated into the napkin. So this is a great way to add in an extra layer with the design element that you've already got in your focal point. Now I'm just going to add one up in the top left and then I'm going to add another one down in the bottom right. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm only going to do the two because we already have them in the design on the napkin. So I'm just going to gently put the ink through and that's it. I'm actually going to call this a day. I'm not going to add any more to the page apart from my title. So to add my title, I'm going to use the Warm Text Alpha Stamps from Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. I've already placed the letters on my acrylic block to spell the word freedom. Because we're talking about freedom in simplicity, I just thought I'd use the word freedom. So I'm just arranging the letters to make sure that I've got them as tight and as close together as I can and that they're stuck on. Just going to press them down onto the block. And then using the same Jet Black Archive link that I've already used, I'm just going to load the stamps up with the ink and then I'm just going to stamp the word freedom just above the text or the script block in the bottom left hand corner of the page. And now I'm calling this page complete. I'm allowing the white space of the paper to stay as it is. I'm not going to add any splatters. I'm not going to add any border. I'm just going to allow the simplicity of the page just to sit as it is. You don't need to go mad all the time. It worked for Mark Rothko. It worked for Mondrian and it will work for you too. So I hope you enjoyed watching that art journal page come together. White space is a very good use of layering or anti-layering if you like. Um, you don't have to use every square inch of the page for a composition to be elegant or to work. So I hope that art journal page just shows you that you can just use one or two simple layers, stick to a couple of colours and yet still produce an art journal page that makes you happy. And I know this one really made me happy. So if you did enjoy watching this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share with all your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. It's all from me for now. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.